the good morning so many times, but what, what harm will one more give? It is such a beautiful day. Welcome to our online worship at East Union Mennonite Church. It's getting to be a little bit more normal every week, uh, but hopefully we can get together and worship together in person sooner rather than later. What a wonderful day this is, the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will say at this time of social distancing and stay-at-home mandates and essential workers, I find solace in knowing that, that people everywhere still find ways to stay connected with each other, to offer help and encouragement to each other, to show love and to give hope to one another. Today is Palm Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Lent. We celebrate this day of the Messiah entering Jerusalem through the Golden Gate, not as a king who would deliver Israel through battle and strength of military might, but as a humble servant riding on a donkey who would deliver everyone, young and old, rich and poor, through service, understanding, peace, and love. This week leading up to Easter is a week full of emotional swings, for me at least. Moments of joy and celebration today will give way to to more of a serious tone and somber reflection uh, Thursday, Monday, Thursday. But as we go through the week, let us know and let us remember that through his death, he gave us life. And that washes the slate clean and gives us life. And what a wonderful gift that is. But today is a day of joy, a day of triumph, a day to shout, a day to sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to God in the highest, Hosanna, praise his name. With that welcome finished, we will now turn to this morning's announcements, and I believe Greg Yoder will start those. Good morning. A um, couple church council updates for everybody. Um, it, it, yeah. Uh, I'll just get started. Joel um, has brought it to our attention. He and his family has, have discussed some things. Um, we also spoke with the elders and church council. Um, at this time, he is deciding, he and his family have decided to postpone their sabbatical until the summer of 2021. Uh, elders and church council have unanimously support Joel and his family in this decision. So we just wanted to make sure everybody kind of had the same information. Um, also, there's a couple of projects. Um, Council's decided to take this opportunity to, to do some work at church. Um, Norman Schrock has done some painting at church. Uh, before we all were asked to stay at home, he had painted the church council room. Um, since that time, he has also kind of moved throughout the hallway and into the kind of the, the gallery, the, the common area. Um, and so there's, you will notice some changes when you do come back to church. Um, additionally, uh, it was determined that we would paint the sanctuary. That's been in need of, of a, a fresh update. And so um, LeDrew Miller from George's Painting is, is, is working on that right now. Um, and so then the, the last piece of the updates, um, the nursery, the bathroom in the nursery, it was determined that we would utilize that as um, the, the bathroom for the, um, the, the congregation uh, during services. And so there's some ongoing work with that. And um, the, we've started the demolition at this point and they will be making that space a little bit more ADA compliant, not 100%, but we'll have a little bit wider doorway and access, and the access will not be off of the nursery itself. Um, so there was just a couple things that we wanted to bring to your attention. Additionally, one last item. Um, this week, uh, Joel Beachy and I and Joel Miller have been working with uh, Jace Bailey through Hills Bank, um, through the CARES Act, East Union is eligible to apply for a, essentially a grant. Um, it's called the Payroll Protection Pl uh, Program. And so uh, we've submitted that application. Um, we're just anticipating with the slowdown that that's, that is going to affect East Union down the road. And so uh, we just wanted to make everybody aware that we 
have gone through that process and submitted that application, we will see uh, in turn kind of how that all plays out. But we just wanted to keep people informed of what all is going on uh, from, from the council's end of things. Thank you. We also want to have an announcement of some birthdays in the congregation. As you can see on your screen, we want to wish happy birthdays to Annie Troyer, Chance Litwiller, and Colton Litwiller. Anyone else, happy birthday if we missed you. So let's all join together where you are and sing happy birthday on this day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Annie, Chance, and Colton. And everybody else. Happy birthday to you. Well, that's <laughs> it's fun to celebrate with you. <laughs> that is, Have a wonderful that day. That is the truth. I said today is a day of joy. <laughs> we will now light the Christ candle as a symbol of hope. Let us welcome the spirit that connects us, even though we are in different places. Our call to worship this morning, I will read the leader. Emily will read the uh, portion of the all and join with Emily for all. The Lord is my strength and my song and has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will live to tell what the Lord has done. God's faithful love endures forever. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer. God's faithful love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God, and I will praise you. Give thanks to the Lord, whose faithful love endures forever. God's faithful love endures forever. We'll now have scripture with Heidi Detweiler. Good morning. I'll be reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and then 19 to 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this It is in this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the feastal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And next, if our audio is going with us, we will be sharing um, a new song together that we will hopefully get to know in the, um, in the future. It comes from the new Voices Together hymnal. The song is called, You're Not Alone. And it is written by Brian Moyer Suderman. Some of you may be familiar with him. He is a Canadian Mennonite singer, songwriter, and storyteller, um, and he has small, tall ministries. So our family has gotten to know some of the work um, of Brian over the past couple of years. Something I really appreciate about his music 
is that, um, as we all know, sometimes kids music is not as fun for parents to listen to. Um, but Brian's music really is enjoyable for kids and adults alike. And it teaches um, theology, it teaches Bible stories um, in a really fun way. This song in particular, um, I have really liked. You can often, if I'm driving around in the van with the boys trying to get them to go to sleep, you might hear this song playing in our van. Um, Brian explained that this song, um, he, he wrote it as he was reflecting. He had spent several months with Christians from a number of different places around the world. They were together in Africa, and then they all dispersed to where they live, and um, they weren't together anymore, and maybe they would never see each other again. And he was thinking about what does it mean um, to be the body of Christ, like scripture describes, when physically we're just not in the same place. Um, I think we can all relate to that question in this time as well. Um, so this song he created as a reflection on that. Um, and I kind of hold with hope one of the lines um, that says, I know a day is coming when we will be rejoicing together anew. And I think we can all look forward to that together. So I hope you'll enjoy um, the song, You're Not Alone. In lieu of uh, delay on the song, I'll uh, just remind everyone um, that we can ask everybody to check out the online giving option um, and or you can mail your offering to East Union Mennonite Church. In this form of uh, worship as offering, will you please join me in prayer over, over our giving nature? We come to meet you, Jesus, in our joy of giving. You gave us your life, walking the road to Jerusalem. Freely we have received and freely we give. We lay these resources at your feet. Our hosannas to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. All right, kids. Gather close, but not too close to the screen. Six feet distance. But just get excited. Get your palm branches ready and uh, join us in children's time. We'll be joining the Yoder family who have a special, special message for you and the grown-ups too. So children's time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hello, welcome to Children's Time. Have you ever yeah. cheered for someone or for your favorite team? Have you ever cheered on a friend or a teammate? Take a minute to show your parent or an adult in the room what your face looks like when you're excited, when you are excited and cheering on your favorite team or teammate. <laughs> no. <laughs> Doesn't it feel fun to cheer on something or someone that you love? Uh, it can be exciting and it feels good to celebrate an exciting time in a game or in life. Today is Palm Sunday. If children, if you have your Shine Bible at home, please turn to page 249 and at where I will be reading Matthew 21 verses 1 through 11. Let's read the story to find out why waving palm branches are a symbol on Palm Sunday and why we hear songs with the words Hosanna and Hallelujah on Palm Sunday. So this is from the Shine Bible. It's Jesus rides into Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples were heading toward Jerusalem. Near the city, Jesus told two of his disciples, go into the village ahead of us and you will see a donkey colt tied up. Untie it and bring it back with you. If anyone asks what you are doing, say to them, the Lord needs it and will send it right back. So Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on the colt. Some people were so happy and excited about his coming that they spread their cloaks on the road before him. 
Others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Everyone shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said, Teacher, order these people to be quiet. Jesus answered, If I silence these people, the stones themselves would shout out. Thank you for that story, Greg. Um, I'm going to have Joni um, move ahead to one more slide. Um, so Nora was talking about cheering and being really excited at a game. But have you ever been at a ball game where you're cheering for your favorite team or for one of your teammates and someone suddenly gets hurt and our emotions change? The feelings of joy and excitement suddenly change to sadness and fear. If someone gets hurt during the game, the excitement stops. The fun stops. The game stops. Usually when this happens, teammates and players, even on the other team, get down on their knees as a sign of reverence for the player who's hurt. What once was a fun game where we're cheering loudly can quickly become sad or when, when someone gets hurt. That's what happened with Jesus and his friends after the joy of waving the branches. The story changes here. Jesus was che being cheered and respected with the branches and the shouting of Hosanna, but then something else happens. The emo emotions change and the excitement and the cheering changed. The people went from feeling joy to feeling sorrow, and the crowd wasn't happy with Jesus anymore. We'll end our story today with Philippians 2.10, and we're going to read it aloud um, from our home. So if you can read at home, join us in saying it um, from the screen, and then we'll close with prayer. At, at the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus every, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, earth and, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Bow your heads and join us in a final prayer for children's time. Thank you, God, for sending your son and paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for what today stands for, the beginning of Holy Week. We start the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the rich truth that Jesus is truly our King of Kings. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. So, kids, if you have your palm branches, I want to invite you again to wave them and, uh, and show your enthusiasm because Jesus is entering Jerusalem today. When we think about waving palm branches, uh, the people of Jerusalem saw Jesus as a potential hero, someone who would overthrow the evil Roman Empire. They cut palm branches and laid them before Jesus as he rode into the city. In ancient times, when we think about palm branches, they, they symbolized goodness, well-being, grandeur, steadfastness, and victory. It talks about in the Old Testament that King Solomon had palm branches carved into the very walls and doors of the temple. On the walls around the temple, in both the inner and outer rooms, he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. And it talks about this in 1 Kings. Palm branches were regarded as tokens of joy and triumph and were customarily used on festive occasions. In Leviticus, it reminds the people to uh, take branches of palm trees and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. In Nehemiah 8.15, it says, Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booths as it is written. Kings and conquerors were welcomed with palm branches being strewn before them and waved into the air. And victors in old uh, Grecian uh, games returned to their homes triumphant with a uh, waving of palm branches in their hands. 
at the end of the Bible, even in the book of Revelation, it speaks of people from every nation waving palm branches in honor of uh, Jesus. In Revelation 7 to 9, it says, After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before their throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And so this is the reason we, uh, we practice this today. We remember that uh, we are honoring our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he is entering into Jerusalem. And so I invite you again uh, to wave your palm branches this morning in honor of Jesus. Well, I do want to say good morning, and it is good to be worshiping with you again this morning. Um, I'm so thankful for each of you, and that uh, despite the fact that we can't be physically present with one another, that we can be present online. And uh, as we're um, worshiping together this morning, I'm wondering uh, what we imagine a hero to be. When you think of a hero, who do you see in your mind's eye? What do they look like? How do they sound? Who is around them? Sometimes we imagine uh, or we think about the images of King David. If we uh, think about King David, he uh, was considered a mighty warrior. Um, he uh, he would uh, he triumphed over the Philistines, and uh, in First Samuel thirteen, we remember that uh, it was King David who um, was a man after God's own heart. He was the one that uh, that the people talked about, and um, in the image that you see now on your screen, there this is the image of King David returning triumphant over. Uh, Goliath, and we see in the image uh, him riding on horses and the people um, uh, clapping and waving and so excited. He looks like uh, the, the quintessential warrior, the person with all the power, with all the might, and he's coming in to, uh, into his own. Uh, King David is the person who we think of as, as being lifted up as, as the king who everyone would aspire to be. He's the one that uh, God had anointed by Samuel and lifted up after King Saul. He was the model. Um, and yet, when we think about uh, times like these, Fame and power and glory rings kind of hollow in the time of the coronavirus. You know, I was thinking about it this week. Celebrity kind of wanes thin. Uh, without the crowds of adoring fans, it's difficult to recognize celebrity from ordinary folk. I don't know, um, I'm not encouraging this, but uh, if you watch any uh, uh, morning programs or late night programs, all of the hosts are, are by themselves. They don't have an audience anymore. And when they deliver their joke lines, it's amazing how flat it sounds um, when you hear them. Without all of the cameras, without all the lights and the glitz, without all the people around them, it's hard to recognize them as being any different than anyone else you would meet. Where are the flashing lights? Where is the red carpet? Even King David in all his glory does not have the same sense of power and authority without a crowd around him. If in this image, if we took away all of the other people and we just had him, uh, he wouldn't seem as grand. Without the spoils of victory beside him, he wouldn't seem as powerful. And it's to this that we speak because Jesus demonstrates a new kind of kingdom, a humility, an acceptance, an obedience. These are the hallmarks of Jesus's ministry, the centerpieces of Jesus's humanity. In the image that you see now of Jesus riding into Jerusalem, 
he is not riding on a, a war horse like King David, and he's not surrounded by people um, with uh, gold and, 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 uh, and images of war like swords. He's riding on a donkey and people are prostrating themselves. They're gathering palms to wave. This morning we hear the joyous shouts of the multitudes at Jesus' arrival to Jerusalem. They proclaim him as king, but very soon these shouts of joy will be twisted into cries of accusation, contempt, and mocking. Yet even in the midst of cruelty and anguish, Jesus remains oriented to the steadfast love of God, which sustains him and endures forever. This is the same steadfast love that God offers to each of us, to each of you, the same power that transforms Jesus from humble servant to glorious king. Even riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and being taken to the cross cannot contradict Jesus' status as the Messiah. The letter of Paul writes, guides us to explore God's steadfast love as seen in the person of Jesus, in his postures, in his words, his choices. In these days and hours that mark the center of our faith as Christians, we are called to follow Jesus. On Palm Sunday, as we enter the gates of Holy Week, the demands and the transforming possibilities of this call are set before us. So at this time, I'm going to invite uh, Warren and Emily to lead us in a confession. I will read the leader of the confession. If you will follow with Emily at Kyria Legason with the people. Oh God, we come to you as the people who greeted Jesus on the road to Jerusalem, full of joy and praise and thanksgiving. Forgive us for the times we forget to show you our gratitude. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. We come as the people who were baffled when they realized how quickly their joy was turned to sorrow. For you, Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. We come wanting to be with you as you enter the time and place of your death knowing we cannot face this week alone. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Know that Jesus does offer mercy and understands that hard road between joy and devastation, between belief and disbelief. Know that Jesus will never leave you and will love you on whatever part of the road you find yourself on. Amen. Joel? So we started our journey of Lent with Jesus in the wilderness, and we continue our journey uh, with Jesus. At the beginning of Lent, Jesus was in the wilderness. He did not choose the easy road. If we remember back, uh, he was tempted by Satan uh, a number of times, and each time he chose a different path. He does not choose the easy road at any point. And sometimes I was wondering, you know, if we don't sugarcoat the cross uh, that he is headed to. Uh, we see it so often as a, as a necklace to be worn or a piece of artwork to adorn the front of a sanctuary. And we, we clean it up. We make it nice and neat. We commodify it, something to be bought something to have, something to hold. One cross equals unlimited number of people set free. It's transactional. The problem with this image is that it denies the reality of the cross, the brutality of the cross. The cross is not hope. It's the absence of hope. Philippians 2, 5 to 11 reminds us of this harsh reality. Jesus went to die a horrible death on a piece of wood at the top of the hill. 
In Philippians 2, 5 to 11, it says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Everywhere Jesus went and with everyone whom he talked to, Jesus reminded them uh, five times in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke to, uh, in one example, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. We'll see this in Matthew 10, 38, Matthew 16, 24. Mark 8, 34, Luke 9, 23, and Luke 14, 27. In the book of John, he uses the imagery of a vine and abiding in the vine. There's a reason that he says, take up the cross. There's a reason he says, abide in the vine. We cannot escape the cross. We are bound to it. We are bound for it. Jesus did not go to the cross, so we do not have to. He went to the cross, so the tomb would be empty. Uh, recently, I have been reading uh, some devotionals, and uh, one in particular uh, stood out to me. Uh, the author talked about uh, this idea of uh, the cross as being something inescapable. And part of the reason are these five uh, key points that, that the author makes. One is that life is hard. The second one is that you are not important. The third is that your life is not about you. The fourth is that you are not in control. And the fifth is that you are going to die. Harsh, harsh words. Uh, but it's important for us as we enter into Holy Week not to dismiss this reality that life is hard. And in the midst of the coronavirus, you may be feeling some of that life's hardness right now. This uncertainty, this anxiety, we recognize in this moment how, how hard life is. And the fear and the reality of death as the numbers continue to climb uh, makes us all the more anxious. Likewise, if you're uh, like me, you're missing friends and family. Uh, you uh, wish so much that you could just hang out and be together, but we can't. You may be worrying about work and health, and you may literally be worrying about death. Worldwide, and I think these numbers have already changed uh, and since I gathered them, but there's over a million cases worldwide, 64,000 deaths, and 246,000 people recovered. In the United States alone, there are 305,000 cases, over 8,000 deaths, and 14,000 recovered. So how do we deal with all this pain, this hardness, this fact that life is hard? It seems like it's hopeless, but there is hope, and it lies in the empty tomb. It doesn't make for as neat of a necklace. It doesn't make for as neat of an item to put on, like a decoration to put on the mantle, but the rolled away stone is our hope. It reminds us that even if we go to the cross, even though we die, though we sacrifice, though we lose, our hope is not lost. Our hope lies in a victory that cannot be taken away or diminished. It is safe and solid like a piece of stone rolled away from an empty tomb.
This final week of Lent takes us to the cross. Jesus' last days are a continuation and completion of his ministry. Through his death and resurrection, he remains steadfast to humble service. This week reveals the humility of Jesus and Jesus' sacrifice. His willingness to die reminds us of the power that resides in that same humility. Jesus proclaims that he is able to succumb to the very worst, the very worst that the world has to offer. The vilest depravity, being accused and executed for crimes he did not commit. But Jesus will carry that bur the burden of the cross, help to erect it, and hang on it, and die on it. We cannot hope to get to Easter without going through the cross. But when we do, we are always guaranteed that the stone over our grave will be rolled away. May we have the strength and the courage to stay steadily moving towards the cross with Jesus. May we shoulder the cross and bear its most oppressive weight. May you search your heart and identify the sin and brokenness that distracts you from being in one mind and spirit with Christ. And may we stand strong in the face of uncertainty, knowing that our hope lies in an empty tomb. May it be so. We are going to transition now into our signs of hope. This has been um, something that we've done each week uh, since we've been um, going on our journey of online services. And it's a reminder that uh, hope is a, pers a perspective, something that we choose to take on as people of faith. Um, just like I was mentioning about the empty tomb, we look for signs of hope all around us in this life. How is God moving? How is God um, breaking in with his kingdom into the present here and now? And so I invite you to join with me as we uh, celebrate these signs of hope together. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you 
working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working Also want to recognize uh, the song Waymaker was uh, sung by Caleb and Kelsey from the Anthem Lights uh, YouTube channel this morning. So we're transitioning now to our sharing and prayer time. Um, again, we want to encourage you to submit your prayer requests. Uh, you can send them to uh, any of the elders or um, myself or to uh, Crystal at, um, at uh, the church office. Uh, so we invite you to do that um, throughout the coming weeks. And this is the way that we'll stay connected with each other. And so we invite you to do that. Um, also wanted to uh, just say that uh, we're hoping to gather information in the uh, coming weeks. Uh, so be looking for a survey our hope is to identify needs in the in the church and in the community, um, ways that we can support one another. Uh, maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it is a uh, prayer request. Uh, maybe it is um, uh, some kind of uh, work that needs to be done outside and around the house. Uh, please be in touch with us. Uh, we want to stay connected. And so I offer this uh, prayer to you as, uh, as a closing of the sharing time, um, uh, this is taken from um, the Conference of Catholic uh, Bishops that I wanted to share with you this morning. So pray with me. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. God, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope comfort and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. You're not alone.
So now I invite you uh, to our closing benediction. May you find the balance you need in the ups and downs of your life. And may you have the courage to keep walking with Jesus. Go in peace to continue your walk with Jesus this day. We do want to uh, make you aware of a number of uh, upcoming events this week um, on your screen. You should be able to see that there is our Poverty Inc. discussion on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this is hosted by Katrina Miller and um, is a video series that we started last Wednesday. Uh, if you weren't able to participate, you're welcome to join us. Uh, you can jump in in the middle and I think be able to uh, participate well. We also will have a Monday Thursday service available um, that we're going to do a Zoom meeting online uh, Thursday at 6.30. And then our Easter service will be uh, Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. Just like today uh, with 9.30 we'll be gathering and you can say hi to folks. And then at 10 a.m. we'll have our service. We also wanted you to be aware that we're going to be sending out some instructions. There are a number of things that you can do to prepare for each of these services at home. Uh, so I believe there's images here of a uh, living cross. Um, these are living crosses that were um, used as a uh, template or a, a model for how you could create a living cross at home. I know that so many of us wish we could be together on Sunday morning and put together the living cross that we do as our annual um, marker of this important day, but, but we invite you to, uh, to create your living cross as a, an individual or as a family um, at home uh, and, and be able to share those uh, on, on next Sunday morning. We'll also be sending out information about how to, um, about getting bread ready for communion on Monday, Thursday, as well as uh, instructions on, um, on uh, doing a sunrise service if you want to on, on Sunday morning before our Easter services. So again, there's lots of different ways to participate in the upcoming week for this Holy Week, and we invite you to join us.